In today's video, we're going to do an overview of the Clover dashboard, what to look for, and the commonly missed things. See you in the video. Okay, today we're going to go over the Clover dashboard. I'm going to show you quickly how to log in. This is some of the few highlights, and then I could break stuff down in future videos just to show you, uh, just to go a little bit more in depth on how to use everything. So first, you got to do is log in. So whatever email that you use to start the account, that's the email that you're going to use initially to log in. So you go to your Clover dashboard, and it's going to say login. And you're going to put your email, and you're going to go access your account. It'll ask you to put your email in, and it'll send you a username and password to the email that you have on file. Once you get that username and e email um, that's attached to it, you put it in here. It'll ask you for a password that you created through the email, and then you'll be able to log in. Once you log in, you're gonna you're gonna go to employees, employees list, and you're gonna go to add employee. You put the first name, the phone number, uh if they want to have access to the dashboard if you don't want them to have access then there's no reason to put the phone number on there and then the most important thing not most but one of the things that you should pay attention to is this roles where it says employee managers and admin roles because those roles you can really define and customize them so people will have the proper proper access to the proper things uh, you can put your hourly rate on there just to help with payroll, and then it's going to ask for a, um, a passcode that you put in. So you put the passcode in. Once you put the passcode in, it will bring you to a page like this. There's things to note is that the settings, you go to settings and view all settings. A lot of people miss that. And then another thing is that the things in the settings, some of the stuff is in this sidebar over here. And then also more. A lot of people miss out on there. This is where your customization, some of the apps that you've bought and um, that you have on there that you can take take on and off to really customize the things you want. I always like to just talk to the top right corner where it says the settings. So the first thing is the business info. So the first thing you're going to see is mid. Mid is... It's essentially your account number with Clover. And so it'll show your mid number. So if you ever have to call customer service, this is the number most likely that they'll ask for. And then you have your business info down here. And then one other cool thing, if you have the logo, uh, you can put your logo. And if you have a Clover Duel, that's the one with the front-facing um, display, th this image will show on that display. And it should also show the private policy. Private policy. Next thing is the reporting settings. So, with your reporting, you can make it twelve to twelve, or if you had a certain time that you want reporting to go through, you can do it from seven to seven. Whatever thing you like, just to to um, have custom reports. Pretty self-explanatory. You have to play with that. Payment preference. So. You can customize a couple things. So you have to tap to pay with your phone. You know, uh, you can change the tenders like some people don't take checks. So you can make sure you just take checks off there or gift cards if you don't have that. Another thing for your reporting is just the custom tender. So, you know, if you have third party uh, websites like that DoorDash or Grubhub or um, your menu, uh, you'll be able to see where with the actual transactions come from uh, reason to track your void and refund so if it's too many refunds you can see who that's coming from payment threshold so with your payment threshold for instance if you know that your average transaction is twenty dollars then you don't need your payment trust threshold to be five hundred dollars you know you might want to make your threshold a hundred dollars or five hundred dollars so nobody can put anything crazy um, uh, crazy transaction without a manager's override um, you can send invoices through Clover so if a person's not there I'll show you that a quick 
thing in a second and we'll do this a longer video on there cash back and then signatures so one thing you can do with Clover is that you can require everybody to have a signature or you can require that someone at a certain threshold will have a signature so if someone comes back in the future and try to dispute the transaction that you actually have a physical um, a receipt of them signing for it and then help you win the dispute so you won't lose money out on those transactions another cool thing about clover is that you can take offline payments but you know you you definitely want to make sure i would say in reference to preference on how you connect your clover you want first ethernet if that can be hardwired into the ethernet to your internet that's number one second wi-fi and third would be um a third option would be if you want to pay for a data plan and the data plan will allow you to take transactions regardless of where you are as long as you have power to plug in the clover but let's say for some reason you don't have power you have a pop-up you don't normally do or the power went off um the the internet went out uh in your restaurant you can still take transactions and either till the internet comes out or sometimes I'll tell people is that you know if you're really concerned about the internet you use your phone connect your phone to the to the clover and take a couple transactions so you can make sure these transactions are going through but in the event you don't the clover has their data plan and it'll it'll take limits on there so it might not accept as much as you normally do but you'll still be able to take credit cards Payment receipts, uh, pretty self-explanatory. Just the way your receipt lo looks, you know. A lot of times, it's got to just be mindful how long your receipt is for you and for the customer to save you some money on some receipt paper. And a lot of times, people don't even necessarily need the receipt. Um, then we go to view all. I'll go back there because that was kind of fast. View view all settings. So. Um, this is the login information I had to do in these employee roles that we went through that the the employee, the admin, and the, and the manager. And then you can have the thing I was talking about before is the employee permissions. So with this employee permissions, it makes you can customize a whole bunch of items. One thing that a lot of people miss is that these items might have sub items in there. Um, so you click that and you can just see if if you don't want necessarily everybody on there. Like I had example when I had um, a business owner, their, their employees weren't able to open the cash register if they need to change or whatever the case may be. So we're looking through all these permissions. I had to go through each one, open up each um, permission to see. So I'll we finally get down to access register with 22 hidden permissions <laughs> so we went through these permissions and found out the access to manual transactions is off and so we had to put that on and then they were able they were able to to open open the open the register so there's a number of transactions you can go in there and just just take your time, look through everything, and uh, make sure everything's customized the way you want. Um, another thing is the monthly billing will stay to the right side. So you can see your monthly bill every month. So you do not have to guess what's, in, what's on your transaction. So it'll show you, it's two things. The merchant processor statement, that's how much MasterCard and Visa and your processor are charging you to process payment on the network. And the Clover and app statement is the with the the fee that Clover charges, the software fee that Clover charges every month, and any additional services that you might have with Clover. And so that's how they're separated right here. And you can go back for years if you needed to. Uh, 
Um, and that brings me to a point. Let's say you have one a clover that you had before or, you know, you change. You can always go up here and go to switch business and it'll give you the options of the different businesses that you have. Um, online ordering is a is a um, is a video in itself, and I'll make one in the future. Uh, the reporting, basically, you can go and look, see any kind of matrix that's under your account, and we'll look at that in a second. Taxes and fees. You want to make sure you you're collecting taxes on there, and you can itemize these these fees out there. Or you could do the pre-calculation before anybody does it. But usually you like to just put the fees on people so people know that this fee's not coming to me. It's getting paid for your, to for taxes and so we can run this business. Um, additional charges similar to taxes and fees. Tips. So if, if you're accepting tips, you can, you can customize your tips or... You, or if you don't accept tips, you don't have to take them. You know, you won't take them at all. And you include the, um, this so it won't prompt you at all. If you're a mechanic, <laughs> most likely nobody's going to give you a tip, so you can take that off. And then you can sync it. You can change the business hours. Uh, that helps with the online ordering, more, more reference. And then also... You can sync this to with QuickBooks, um, with QuickBooks to your account, so they can look at the transactions by themselves. Um, another thing is this: the order types and payment receipts. So, um, your order types it'll help this with the reporting. So, if you have something come from Uber Eats or DoorDash or your menu, and you have something. Um, in-house, you have catering. It'll tell, it'll separate those different categories on there, so it can be easier for you to see where the money's coming from. Um, and then you know, payment receipts kind of explanatory. One thing I know a lot of people miss is this new sale. So in new sales, you can do pre-authorized payments. You can do invoicing. You could call car verification just to make sure that they have enough money on, on their car before you take it, which is pretty cool. And so you take a payment, you put the amount, see what the taxes are, and and then they put your account information and you can send them an email. It's a payment receipt, and they'll have it that way. If you wanted to send them an invoice, the invoice, you put in everything, put the customer's info on there. And when you add a customer's info, it will create an invoice for them and send an invoice out to them. And we'll, we'll, we'll look at that in a different video as well. I know there might have been a few things I missed. Uh, reporting finances, everything's on there. Um, let's let's go to reporting real quick. So reporting, it'll tell you where your tenders came from, what's your most popular items on here, what um, from the top categories to the top items that you're selling for so you know where you might put more money into um, they have gift cards you know you can add this any kind of discounts on there I'll report that how many people accepted gift cards also for financing a lot of times people don't know Clover provides capital but there's other um, capital providers So let's go. So let's go. Let's go under finance. So with finance, you can just see the deposits come in there. This is kind of probably most likely what your accountant looks looks into, and the statements and the taxes, and it just separates everything. And then if we want to 
employees, we kind of went over that already. And if you wanted the, to see your employees and start doing email campaigns or phone numbers, you can do that as well. And then the items, that's a whole number of video. Just to upload the items and if you need to make adjustments, how to make the adjustments on the Clover dashboard and also the adjustments uh, on the POS. I think that's all we have for this video. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know and I'll go into detail with some further videos. And if I can be any other help, please give me a call or shoot me a message. All right, you have a great day. You've been over the Clover dashboard now. If there are any other questions, please leave a comment, send a message, and we'll get back to you with an answer. See you in the next video.